Hi everyone, my name is Anagaha and I'm part of the data science discovery team. In this video today, we're going to be doing a question on probability. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we're kind of dealing with these astrological signs, right? So there's obviously 12 of these uh, kind of zodiac astrological signs, right? Assume that each sign is equally likely. So we have a group of four people what is the, uh, like for random people, right? So what is the chance that at least, there's at least one zodiac match, right? So that means at least two people uh, share a sign. And you know, here here's a kind of a formula to remember, right? So kind of before we get started, let's kind of have some, um, gain some intuition on how the probability of at least one formula works, right? So if we have these four people that, um, I'm kind of dealing with, right? And we want to find what is the probability, uh, what is the chance that there's at least one zodiac match, right? So what does that mean? Like what is at least one in, in a general context mean? For example, what is the probability that there's at least one person who satisfies a certain condition? Well, at least one person means that you know there should be at least um, the one person that satisfies the condition right there can be two people that satisfy the condition there can be three people that satisfy the condition and then finally there can be all people who satisfy the condition so you have the probability of at least one if you have, let's say, four people, then we can generalize it. Is the probability that one person satisfies this condition plus the probability that two people satisfy this condition plus the probability that three people plus, um, satisfy the condition plus the probability that four people satisfy, all people satisfy this condition, right? So which combination are we missing? What is the only combination that is missing here? Well, it's a probability that none of these people satisfy this condition, right? Because when I have the probability that at least one person needs to satisfy a condition, I must always have one person that satisfies a condition, right? There's no way I can have no people satisfy the condition. So the only combination that we're missing here is the probability that no people out of however many n people we have satisfy a condition the probability that no events satisfy a condition right so the probability um and again we know based on the like complementary rule is that the probability of a is equal to the one minus probability of a complement right so if i have the probability of something happening that's one minus the probability of that thing not happening right so the probability of at least one can be written as one minus the probability of none, right? In here, in this case, it was one minus the probability of none of these four people satisfying that condition. So basically, we can, you know, find the probability of at least one. Yes, we can sum up all of these combinations of however many people we have. But I mean, that's fine with four people, right? What if we have 100 people or 100 events? We're not going to sum up probability of one plus a probability of like two plus a probability of so on all the way up to 100, right? It makes a lot of sense just to do one minus a probability of none of these events satisfying a condition. So that is why the one minus a probability of none is a good formula to use when trying to find the probability of at least one event satisfying a certain condition, right? So that's kind of how we get this formula right here. So now we wanna find the, what is the chance that there is at least one zodiac match, right? So we have these four random people. What is the chance that there's at least one zodiac match? And I'm just gonna go ahead uh, and kind of erase this for now. Um, and the probability of at least one zodiac match is the same thing as one minus the probability that none of these four people have a zodiac match, right? So none of the four people have a match, right? 
So that um, means that if I have four people, right, so I have person A, person uh, one, two, three, and person four, this person can have any zodiac, right? I don't care what sort of um, astrological sign they have, right? It, it can be any. So there's all possible combinations here, 12 out of 12. You can have any uh, zodiac sign you want, right? The next person, um, when and again, I'm trying to find the probability that none of these people have a zodiac match. The one minus part is pretty easy, but how do I find this part? So that's what we're kind of dealing with here. So the probability that none of the four people have a match, well, the first person can have any zodiac they want, right? The second person can have any zodiac except the zodiac that the first person had, right? So out of 12 combinations, there's only 11 left because the first person already took one and the second person can't have the same one, right? So the second person only has 11 out of 12 choices left because the first person already took a zodiac, right? We're trying to find that none of these people have matching zodiacs. So if I already took a zodiac, like somebody else can't have the same one, right? And then finally, step uh, for person number three, they can have any zodiac they want except the zodiac that person A had and the zodiac that person B had. So two are already taken, out of 12, two are already taken. Person C can have, you know, the rest of the 10, any, any zodiac from 10 choices. So there's only 10 out of 12 possible choices left. And then very similarly for part D, uh, for person D, there's only nine choices out of 12 total zodiac signs left because these first three people already took three signs that they can't have, right? Because we want all of these to be totally different. None of these signs should match. So when we want to find the probability that, okay, person A can have all possible choices and person B can have 11 out of 12 choices and person 3 can have 10 out of 12 choices and person D can have 9 out of 12 choices, that's honestly just a multiplication rule, right? Because remember, the probability of A and B is the same thing as the probability of A times the probability of B given A. But remember here that zodiac signs, um, each sign is equally likely, right? So that means each event, each sign is independent. So just because I have one zodiac sign doesn't mean I'm gonna change the probability of another person having another, another zodiac sign, right? It's totally independent. So because we're dealing with independent events here, right? The probability of A and B is the same thing as the probability of A times the probability of B, right? Because these are both independent events. And now when I talk about these four people, I honestly just have to multiply all these probabilities, right? Because I'm just trying to find the probability that person A has one zodiac sign out of all these 12 possible options times and the probability that, you know, person B has um, a zodiac sign out of 11 out of 12 total options, right? So, so we're just multiplying these probabilities here because we honestly just want to, we're dealing with independent events and we want all of these people to satisfy the following probabilities that are related to them, right? Person A has all possible choices. Person B has only 11 out of 12 possible choices. Person 3 has only 10. Person D has only 9. So, it should be 1 minus 12 out of 12 times 11 out of 12 times 10 out of 12 times 9 out of 12. And kind of this can be rewritten here. Uh, why we're kind of multiplying this again is a probability that person A has any sign, right? That's just 12 out of 12 times the person B has basically 11 out of 12 signs, right? 11 out of 12 signs and then and then kind of so on right so it's this sort of um breakdown here so now when we want to go ahead and you know calculate this you can either enter it like this or you know calculate whatever you get for your final answer and this is just a simple um you know math math problem at that point and then finally the second answer here is we randomly the second question we randomly pick three people from our class what is the chance that none of the three people share your zodiac sign so so this question is a bit different right and we're dealing with the probability of 
basically none of the three people sharing the same zodiac sign as you so let's say i have these three people right and and I, I guess i can draw you in a different color and this is like basically you right and let's say that you have um one zodiac sign right we're trying to find the probability let's let's visit the question that none of these three people share your zodiac sign so the probability that none of the three people share your zodiac sign zodiac sign right so this means that if you have one zodiac sign the other people can only have out of 12 possible choices they only have 11 choices right because if i want to find the probability that none of these other three people share my zodiac sign out of 12 possible zodiac signs they can only have 11 out of those 12 right because i already picked one and it the whatever the other three people have it can't be the same as mine so they actually only have 11 out of 12 possible choices right each of these guys has a probability of 11 out of 12 for their zodiac sign right so when we have the probability that none of these three people share the zodiac sign it's basically saying the probability that i don't know let this person be a this person be c and this person be c uh that person a doesn't have uh, your zodiac sign and person B you know doesn't have your zodiac sign and person C doesn't have your zodiac sign so again I'm kind of dealing with the the multiplication rule again and again right it's the probability of A and B so I honestly just have to multiply all these three probabilities together right because i'm dealing with and here that is the uh multiplication rule basically for for dealing with an intersection and that's um you know basically multiplying the probabilities and here again this is an independent event so really the probability that none of these people share a zodiac sign is a probability that person a doesn't share your zodiac sign which is 11 out of 12 we already calculated it here right because if I have one zodiac sign, the other person can only have 11 out of 12 possible options, times the probability that B doesn't have your zodiac sign, which is again 11 out of 12, right? Because I have a zodiac sign, B just can't have mine. It doesn't matter what A got, we're just dealing with my zodiac sign and the fact that B can't have what I have. And then, and the probability that C doesn't have your zodiac sign, which is again going to be 11 out of 12. So this answer is really just 11 out of 12 cubed. So this is, um, and, and you know, kind of an interesting fact, what if I didn't write the probability that none of the three people share your zodiac sign? What if I change this to probability that none of the, maybe none of, of like some random 100 people don't share your zodiac sign, right? Oh, so this should be none of the, yeah, 100 people share your zodiac sign. Well instead of to the power of three like i'll just have to the power of 100 right because it's going to be the same thing the probability that a doesn't share your zodiac sign and the probability that person b or person two doesn't share your zodiac sign all the way to the probability that person 100 doesn't share your zodiac sign so i'm just going to be multiplying 11 out of 12 times 11 out of 12 times 11 out of 12 100 times which is going to be the same thing as like um if we're dealing with that problem the 100 problem it's going to be 11 out of 12 to the 100 so again we can kind of generalize this that whenever we're dealing with the probability that none of the n people share your um, zodiac sign that's just going to be if we're only dealing with zodiac signs 11 out of 12 to the power of n right because again it's just a multiplication rule which is just multiplying the 11 out of 12 probability times however many people you have right so this is kind of a cool cool thing about probabilities is that you can generalize a lot of formulas and kind of use them to do the math faster and to understand these problems more quickly so i hope this video was helpful if you have any questions let me know and i'll see you next time Bye.